Hey guys, we hope everyone's doing well today and in today's quick video we will demystify the 506B and 506C um, offering terminology. Um, if you've already made a decision to invest passively in real estate via syndications, you've probably already um, come across an alphabet soup of, uh, of definitions. And so today we'll focus on two of those. Um, just a quick reminder that as usual, our videos are for educational purposes only and do not constitute investment, tax or legal advice. So let's begin. Uh, before we go into the actual 506B and C definitions, we'll actually focus on demystifying the accredited investor definition. How the Security and Exchange Commission or the SEC um, defines accredited investor is a, it's actually a pretty comprehensive list and we've included a link to their full definition in the comment section below. Uh, but the two most commonly um, used definitions that apply to individuals are um, an individual with a net worth of one million or more that does not include their primary residence or individual making 200,000 or more in annual income um, that has, um, has made that income in the past two years and is expected to and such income is expected to continue. The threshold for couples uh, is 300,000. Now the expanded SEC definition that we just mentioned is a little bit more comprehensive. So investment advisors uh, holding series 7, 65 or 82, registered broker, licensed registered broker dealers, um, fund managers, nonprofits, etc., family offices, um, those would typically all qualify. And again, of course, check with your um, attorney and investment advisor before you do that, but um, before you versus trying to determine on your own if you have any questions regarding this. Uh, most recently, actually, the House passed a bill uh, that would effectively um, require or allow the SEC to administer an exam for individuals who are uh, perhaps uh, very close but not meeting those minimum um, income and net worth hurdles um, to take that exam and effectively um, ascertain um, their sophistication and, and knowledge of various investment vehicles and thereby receive their accreditation status. Now, uh, why is that important? Well, because they're the two most commonly used offerings that we mentioned are 506B and 506C. Um, the 506B offering is typically reserved for family and friends. The sponsor is not allowed to publicly advertise that investment opportunity or send massive email blasts to a number of people. Typically those opportunities are shared only with individuals with whom that sponsor has a pre-existing substantive relationship. And so pre-existing substantive meaning you and the sponsor have had an opportunity to get to know each other over time. Um, they understand your investment goals and criteria. You understand how they work, operate and what type of investment offerings um, they, they have and uh, there is a mutual fit between the two. Um, typically that's accomplished with a kickoff call that's uh, very relatively um, easy and again helpful for both parties to determine a mutual fit and then getting to know one another over a period of time. Um, in this type of offering, again, you're not necessarily required to validate your accreditation status. If you are accredited, you can still participate, but you do need to have that pre-existing relationship. And um, uh, those types of offering typically have a cap or a limit of 35 non-accredited but sophisticated investors. Um, the other type of offering, 506C, is open to accredited investors only. Now. In that type of offering, the sponsor is allowed to publicly advertise, including on social media, the investment opportunities, accredited investors only can participate, and they are required to um, have a third party validate their accredited investor status. That could be your CPA, um, investment advisor, or there are third party services actually that can uh, perform that as well. So. 
I hope today's uh, quick video was helpful. If it was, please comment, like, share and subscribe and we'll see you at the next one.